Hey, how y'all doing? It's Sharonda, and hey, how y'all doing? And today, per usual, most always, I'm here to talk some books. So let's get into this thing, shall we? Okay, so today, um, I'm going to do another um, recommendation video. Um, and this is a video that will be Black Paranormal Romances with vampires okay or as we tend to say in the black romance space vigros or vigors okay um i just want to say if you are of a certain complexion i probably would not recommend saying that um <laughs> just like i would not recommend you say saying it when we put the n in front of it don't do it with the vampires or the i tend to say vigros okay um but yes so what I want to do, um, I want to start off by recommending some books that I've already read and, you know, some I enjoyed, um, some I didn't. And then I want to do a list, give like, I guess it would be recommendations. These books I have not read, but I am very interested in reading after reading the blurbs. And I was just like, so maybe I can reconvince myself if I can convince you guys um, if these books would <laughs> be something that you would be um, interested in. So bear with me, I'm gonna be looking at my tablet. Um, I know the name of the books. I just have to like, you know, bring them up to refresh this um, this brain that is going on over here, okay? Sometimes when you get a little bit up there in age, sometimes, you know, okay? Um, so yes. So the first book I want to talk about is A Seduction of Dreams and Nightmares by A.J. Locke. Um, this book deals with multiple different paranormals, but there is a, a vampire that is one of the main characters uh, that we will be reading inside of this book. And basically with this, we have Navari, who uh, goes into a... Uh, pretty much what they call it now a wide choose relationship with a succubus and um a sex demon and uh, um or is it incubus either way a sex demon and a vampire and there's also a backstory where we have um where this world that this arthur that aj Locke has created where the paranormals within her world are some of them don't want to be paranormal okay um they want to be human and we have that backstory and then we have it where navari is the key to that because we have a big reveal at the end of the book now during the book we are thinking that navari is um human but um old girl might not be old girl might not be so for the most part, I really did like this book. It, I requested it on NetGalley, got approved, and I was just pleasantly surprised by it. Like, I have, I think I have a video here on my channel uh, where I talked about this book more in depth. It was just a fun ride, and I really, really enjoyed it. Okay, so um, this will be more of a series. Um, this is a story. The Fang series by Nicole Whitfield. I just came across book one one day searching, you know, on the Amazons and I got it and I like this as a whole. I like the series. But basically, let me just give you a brief um, description. So basically, this is a series that revolves around three siblings. All of them are uh, naturally born vampires. And within this series <clears throat> excuse me we are getting where um we are getting where each of the siblings are finding their mates so first book starts off with a bang i really did enjoy the first book and i love that the uh main male character who's a vigro a young vigro a young vigro okay um he I like that he was kind of like, you know, into rock. He was kind of like, you know, a punk rocker or whatever. I really, really did enjoy that. But I liked the first book. Second book, I was just like, hmm, you know, I liked it, but could have been better. And the third book, I liked it, but I was high key disappointed in because the third book was the sister's book. And from going 
through the two brothers books I was just so damn excited to get to the sisters book and I just felt like it didn't give me all that I needed to give oh it didn't need it didn't give me all that it needed to give okay but for the most part this is you know it's a good series I won't complain too much about it but I liked what the author gave us <laughs> there we have one night one bite by Drea Anderson if she had a vampire book, it was definitely going to be in this recommendation. Okay. Um, and basically, this is, is a prequel to a series that she is going to be putting out. I, I, I pray to God she puts it out soon. Um, but I like this so much. And we basically have like this... This gang of damn Vigros, okay? It's a gang of them, and it and and I like it because it's set it's set in this world where you have kind of like these vampires that run the south, and they have this king. This is not his book, but this is one of the the guys that serve him. This is his book um, that we're getting, and he finds his mate in the story, and she's actually a witch. And what I love so much about um, Gia Anderson is like her takes on these characters. But I loved it because the witch was like a fire witch and they had like red hair. Y'all always say black people can't have red hair, but okay. Um, but you know, she has like red hair and you know, they end up being maiden and stuff like that. And then she has to like become part of um, this uh, group of vampires or whatever and she actually I, I it was another part inside of the book i won't reveal too much because it is a uh, pretty much a novelette novella length book so i ain't gonna reveal too much i won't tell you too much y'all but this is a good book and you know she is always going to get me because Junior be like you know that 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 mean when the dude run around be like red to hood nigga that Julia will give you some hood v gross and hood wolves inside of her stories and this book right here has some hood vigros, okay? Could because they have the back lavas, you know, they have the things covering their face and they have the grills. Well, we call them grills up here <laughs> and north, but you know, I know they call them different things, different wares, but yes, I love this book. It is so good. And basically you just have Boz, he is who's the character in this book and she's just giving us an intro into this world that she is going to write and you kind of like might maybe possibly about to have a war between witches and vampires and you know it's, it's about to be some shit going down so i thought it was just a great introduction um for what she wants to do with this series and i need for her to put out more books now we have <coughs> oh excuse me Okay, now we have a Black World After Dark series by Christina C. Jones. This is a total of three books, and it is a book of Vigros, who are all brothers. And basically, within the series, we have the brothers who are all finding their mates. Within the series, some are human, some are, um, I think in the last book, I, uh, I liked because uh, his mate was a, a witch. So, and I think in the second book, she was, she was a, she was a paranormal. I think she was a vampire, but she was like a mix of something else. It, it, it was a lot going on in that second book. I was just like, okay. Um, but this is, a all, no, a all novella, novelette books. Um, for the most part, I like the series. Um, I feel like, and this is just my opinion, um, if you know me, love Christina C. Jones and what she does with her work, um, especially with her staying within the indie space as as long as she has and has been able to put out, you know, banger after banger after banger. Um, but with this series, um, I like the first book. I think she went off, you know, she went off running with this first book. But during the course of the second and third book, you know, I, I feel like, you know, it just kind of you know we didn't get what it didn't give what i felt like <laughs> you know as a reader what i wanted to give what i wanted the books to give me 
but for the most part like i said i did um high key like the series now she does have another book um, within this world um, that she has um, decided to uh, you know to create which is Black War After Dark and um, it is called Here Comes the Sun and I love that book that is a novelette novella length book as well and that book is good as well and it kind of like ties into um, you know, this whole Blackwood um, After Dark series as well, even though it's not part of this series, after, you know, of the these three brothers book books, it is, you know, part of that world. So I would say, you know, check them all out. You know, I never discourage anybody from, you know, not reading something that I did not enjoy or, you know, didn't enjoy as much as I thought I was going to enjoy, but, you know, read it okay read it okay so next book is the dark lord a vampire love story by tina j this is a novella length book um discovered this again while cruising the amazons and i mm, i don't know so i just feel like what the author wanted to 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 do with this story just wasn't fully realized um we have uh ezekiel who is like this vampire is about to be like vampire lord or whatever and he comes across um what was her dog on name uh hope who was just i ain't never read a character in the book that i wanted to smack so damn bad and i think she was like a teacher or something like that like she oh my god i wanted to like if it was a way for me to reach inside of a book and smack the holy hell out of somebody, it would have been Hope's character because Lord, she was whoo. I was like, girl, girl, we whoo. But but I feel like for what the 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 Arthur wanted to do with this story, like I said, it just it just didn't connect, and I feel like the plot of the story just overtook this romance that you know that's supposed to be happening between hope and uh ezekiel and she really didn't give us enough time to especially with ezekiel's character to like get to know them and and you know ugh. yeah I, and I, when i saw the cover on um and my Kindle, I, you know, my Kindle store, I was like, oh, you know, came up as a recommendation. I was like, oh, let me, let me get my hands on this. Let, let me see what's going on. And then I was in the mood to read some more v -Gros And it, yeah, I, yeah. The, it, it, what did I say in my review? I said, um, I, yeah, I, I just need, I, we just needed more with this story. And I, yeah, I, <laughs> We just needed a whole lot more with the Dark Lord. I, I think if she would have just kind of like, you know, did a good combination of the of the relationship between Ezekiel and Hope and then give us, you know, the backstory of what was going on with Ezekiel and, you know, the world he comes from and, you know, would have been some issues with him hooking up with uh, Hope who's human yeah all of that just did not connect and yeah I wanted this story to be better but yeah okay so then the next book is Bloody Fairy this is a novella by B Love and um I I like this book. Um, I like the combination of um, a fairy um, and a vampire. But basically, within this book, we have I think her name was Senya, but uh, S Senya. Um, she like within this story that she tells, like fairies, um, they have like a life cycle. So she's at the end of her life cycle, and pretty much the only way to save her. Or one of the ways to save her is she gets bitten by a vampire. His name was Diesel. And then they kind of like, you know, they have like this romance or whatever. Um, 
it's one of most fun. I, I like this book. It it was different, and then like I said, and it was it's only like actually it's another lit. It's only like eighty eighty seven pages. It was a pretty good story. I'm not mad at it at all. Um, I think what she, she did, what she had to do, um, was in the story. Um, and yeah, we we get like a little bit of back and forth between Senya and Diesel because she's kind of like fighting that, you know, him biting her, and you know, I, and then it's it's kind of like she has this combination of you know being a fairy and a vampire, which I was just like, like why are you fighting that, like shit that's kind of like that that sounded kind of cool to me but, <laughs> but it pretty much it was a good book and like I said it's only 87 pages and I just feel like it's one of those books that you know again like if you're in between long reads and you're looking for you know a little paranormal uh world to kind of like you know dip off into bloody fairy is like a good book to try you know so <laughs> Okay, so this is where I'm going to recommend myself and maybe possibly you guys on some <laughs> some on some books. So these are books I actually want to read. Um, you guys, let me know uh, what you think. So anyway, the first book, and I'll read the blurb um, to give to remind myself and to give you guys a general idea of what these books are about. But we have The Lands of Ariella and Caro. Um, this is an African-American vampire romance. It, it is book one. It looks like it is a three book series. Um, this book is by um, Alicia McCoy. So the blurb. So what we have is a damaged prince and a princess with a secret in a world where vampires rule the seven kingdoms. But these aren't your average bloodsuckers. These vampires use magic and have inner beings called pyres. And pyres have cravings. Oh, kind of like what they try to do with like most vampire stories. Kind of seem like they have kind of like a... Oh, I just lost the thought, but either way. Uh, Princess uh, Valessa Ariella is the eldest daughter of King... Loris Ariella, Lord these names, the original vampire and the one who rules the largest kingdom in Cratius. She resided in Angaria for the past 60 years, but her father has just summoned her home to break the news of her arranged marriage. Who? Uh, she's been promised to Prince Scava Caro, the only heir to the second largest kingdom in the Cratius, and the one in the one known as the land of lust but scarva killed valessa's uncle so she's defensive right from the get-go valessa wants to hate scarva but her pride has other ideas and as the couple leave as the couple leave our Ar ariella for caro things between them go from hostile to worse <laughs> sex becomes a lethal weapon and the conformed speech is replaced with a vulgar one that's heavy with insults. Well, God did. Um, but they must learn to find a common ground because unawares to them both, their union has triggered a series of events that have been centuries in the making. So what do y'all think? I, I'm interested and I want to see what's going on with this. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to read this. And 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 I'm gonna let y'all know what's going on with this book. But I I I I like this blurb blurb blurb. I like this blurb, and I like what it's giving me. I I, I ain't mad at this. I I ain't mad at what I'm reading at all. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Okay, so this one is an upcoming release. It is not going to be released until October 8th, but it is Fate's Embrace by Danny Williams. Um, a Night to Remember, book one. Um, not sure how many books are going to be into the series, but uh, yeah, so let's get to this uh, blurb. Um, in the heart of Detroit, at a gala celebrating the Nightshade Court's new headquarters, Christopher Wilson finds himself entangled in a web of supernatural intrigue as he manages 
uh, security for the event, he is drawn to Barbara Davis, a dragon struggling against her family's oppressive plans for her future. Their fateful touch reveals a soulmate bond that transcends their worlds, um, igniting a fierce connection amid the chaos. Barbara's defiance against an arranged maiden. What is going on with these arranged? <laughs> That is like a big thing I feel like in paranormal romance. It's always some like arranged mating going on. <laughs> it's like these two motherfuckers do not want to be with each other at all. But um where where was I? Uh Barbara's defiance against an arranged mating was a pow was the powerful dragon Reginald leads her to a daring escape, but danger lurks in the shadows. When she is kidnapped, Chris must navigate a perilous landscape filled with dark forces and family betrayer to save her with the support of the nightshade court's formidable leaders he races against times to confront reginald a dragon with a senator sinister past hmm. as their bond deepens barb discovers her own strength and power transforming in ways she never imagined together they must stand against the threats that seek to tear them apart will love be enough to break the chains binding them to their families or will darkness consume their newfound freedom? <laughs> okay. I, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not bad at this. I, I'm. I, it's, it's, it's sounding very, very um, interesting. I've been interested in reading some of these authors' books before. Um, but, uh... Yeah, I just never got a chance to 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 get to him, and I think she has some other um um yeah she has some other books on here too. Oh uh, yeah 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 I see. Okay, so I think this is an offshoot of another series that she has with this whole vampire court or whatever. So it would be interesting to see uh what goes on with this a, a dragon and a vampire. I. We shall see, but that's not till October, so it's one to keep on my list. But we shall see. Okay, then we have Blood for Love by Danny Williams. This is a vampire romance. Um, I've read a book by this author before. It was actually um, a book with a cupid, a romance between uh, a cute with a cupid, and I, I liked it for the most part, but let's get into this particular blurb. They got some long ass blurbs going on here. Oh my God. Okay. Um, Ray King is a reporter who navigates the chaotic world of tabloid journalism with ease, even though she can't navigate her personal life because of, of a past that won't allow her to escape it. She, she does her best to be a good person, a good friend, and a good daughter, most of all. She takes care of her father the same way he took care of her as she grew up without her mother around. Ray could do any would do anything with her father, which is why would do anything with her father, which is why she steered steer clear of vampires since the world found out they aren't creatures of myth, but a blaring reality. Her father hates vampires, which is why so many problems arise when she meets the future guardian of vampire kind, Asa Blackwell. Asa Blackwell loathes humans. They are the bane of his existence. Well, damn. Um, and he hates that vampires need them as food, uh, as a food source. Okay, uh, but that's what they are and have been for the past 10 years since humans and vampires signed a treaty that united them by blood. That's an interesting take. That's that's interesting. Asa feels, Asa's feelings about humans are tested when he meets the gorgeous Ray King. Ray is not like other humans Asa has met and that's evident when he starts falling for her from the moment he first lays eyes on her. As much as he tries to fight his attraction to a human, he knows being with one is inevitable since every born vampire must find a human to partner with. <laughs> and they the bane of your assistance, sir. You need to get your priorities right. But okay. Um, Asa knows Ray 
is his human and that's why he's willing to ignore the protocols of his position and his duty at duty as guardian to get to know the beautiful little human better. This is a long ass blurb. Um, even while surrounded by tensions between two species, judgments from those close to them, and assassination attempts on both of their lives. Shit. Um, Ray and Asa finds a way to defy the odds stacked against them, but those odds remain in their favor or will the challenges in both their lives be too much for their love to endure oh, I like it I I like it this blurb is long as hell but I I, I, I I we gonna give it a go this is already out, so I will be reading this shortly after we get rid of these goddamn ARCs. But um, I like this. Okay. Okay. So this book I've been eyeballing for a while. Um, Brothers Unholy, a Deadly Paranormal Romance by Arthur Nasty. That is truly really the author's name. Arthur Nasty. I ain't mad at that. I like that a lot. Um but right now, I think this is a three book series, I want to say. No, actually, it's well, it's going to be a three book series because it's three brothers. You can tell by the covers. Um, and she has books one and two out. But let's go ahead and get to the synopsis of the first book, which is what I'm going to start off with. Okay. A sincere sin, tyrant, tyrant, and malicio malice are brothers who escapes the <laughs> are brothers who escaped slavery in the 1700s. Determined to steer clear of trouble, they lived in the woods, tending to one another, until sincere stumbled upon what he thought was a holy miracle: a man by the name of Jasper, which. Jasper promised Sincere a new life, vengeance upon those who kept him and his brothers prisoner in a life that he could not have imagined. He only wanted one thing in return, their souls. They traded their souls for un unholy powers and then, and when angered, they loosed, they loosed, they loosed their wicked nature upon the earth. For centuries, they wrought they wrought justice upon the unjustly until Sincere was stabbed in the heart, rendering him powerless. His brothers buried him. Sorry. Um, his brothers buried him, hoping that with enough rest, his immortal soul would repair itself. A hundred years later, Sincere. A hundred years later. I, I hope they checked on their brother. But um, anyway. Um, a hundred years later, Sincere has returned because someone will come up from his slumber. <laughs> Where was his brother's at, okay? And he's desperate to find a woman who would disturb his grave and wake him with her blood. Lord, have mercy. He will not rest until he rids himself of the incessant thoughts of his savoris. But what will a modern woman know about his secret name? I ain't even gonna tell y'all what popped in my head, but okay. Um, Antoinette was running for her life when she stumbled upon Sincere's grave. She took a tumble and bled nearly to death in the cemetery until a mysterious stranger saves her life. But, oh, saves her life, giving her a second chance. Well, who? Okay, anyway, Antoinette is carrying a secret that she thought to quite literally take with her to her grave and she is in if she isn't careful she'll be six feet under the ground before her time while Antoinette runs from one threat she faces the truth of another Antoinette is caught between life and death and she has no idea where her path will lead but if it's up to sincere he will have her claim her and even drain her what <laughs> excuse me okay but like I said I've been eyeballing this book for a while um been wanting to read it I am going to give it a go but yeah I, 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 I like how this I like how this is uh sounding again 
long blurb. Um, but again, um, I like this. I, 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 I like this a lot. And I'm definitely going to give this one a go to. So, yeah. I, I've been here for a while. Um, but yeah, that is it for me. Um, let me know um, if you have read any of these books. If you plan on reading any of these books. Maybe we can you know check out a book together you know but um yeah that is it for me y'all until the next one later days bye